Today I've got a video for anyone interested in what Palantir software looked like back in 2010. So this is going back 12 years, probably about 11 years if you want to call it that, 11 years and a few months at this point. This is a demo on Afghan Operations Insight with Palantir, Palantir Gotham, which was their only product at this point. And the reason I'm even bringing this up, aside from it being a very cool video which shows the purpose and what Palantir was initially set out to do, but it shows the functionality behind the product and what it was able to do at this point. And we already know, we've seen many demos today what the product's able to do. So I think it's very insightful as an investor, as someone that follows the company, cares about the company, to be able to look back at times like these and see this is what the product looked like at this point, this is what it looks like now. So look beyond the graphics because of course the graphics are outdated, but more so the actual skill set of the program that we will see in just a moment. This was a video developed by Palantir that demonstrates how information obtained from open sources could assist military commanders deployed on missions in Afghanistan. So this was back in 2010, of course. We all know what has happened since then. And the integration of such systems with military information from operations, intelligence, and the unit's own collection of patrol reports, check posts, and other security and civil affairs operations can provide an extremely valuable resource as well as effective means by maintaining information continuity by different personnel, analysts, commanders, and units. So all that to say, we're about to explore a demonstration here of a few minutes on what Palantir's software in 2010 was capable of. Here we go. In this presentation, we will demonstrate how Palantir can support the U.S. counterinsurgency in Afghanistan. Palantir is an intelligence and operations platform designed to enable advanced all-source analysis, knowledge management, and collaboration across an entire theater. Our team spent three days gathering a wide variety of open source data, then integrated them into Palantir to develop a clearer picture of the Afghan insurgency. To begin, let's get a top-down view of the situation in Afghanistan by looking at five and a half years of attack data from the ODNI database. Using the histogram, we find more than 3,000 attacks on the graph. Kandahar had the most attacks of any province, and about one-third of these attacks involved IEDs. Expanding the target type property, it appears that the attacks targeted Afghan police by a wide margin. This supports anecdotes from coalition forces that the enemy targets Afghan police, military, and government officials with attacks and intimidation. Next, let's examine attacks on police geospatially. The heat map provides a clear view of where attacks are concentrated. And using the timeline, we can also get a picture of their temporal patterns. So that's really amazing right there. You saw that he was able to take the information, dragging in the map graph that I was talking about in my last video when I was discussing the purpose of Gotham and the, what it really does as a platform. So you're able to parlay that data into a graph map. And here we're able to see checking on the time series of data, we can select a different time, drag that over a period of time and see in real time as we are interacting with the data, the effect that it has on the map, how it shows up these different units uh, that are displayed on the screen. It's, it's really amazing to see what you're able to learn visually. A picture's worth a thousand words, but it's so much more than that because you're able to take in so many pictures all at once. You're able to manipulate the pictures. This is not just some human working on analyzing the data on their own with a calculator, obviously that wouldn't be the case, but it's making the data visual. What Palantir always talks about, it's combining the power of humans and the power of machines and artificial intelligence to some degree to supplement the intelligence of a human to get to a, a result that would not be possible otherwise or would take so much longer. So for someone to be able to manipulate data drag it into another environment and then select only part of that and to have that visualized is just so powerful. And this is back in 2010, of course. We've seen the interfaces change. The core technology is still the same and has been elaborated on uh, much of over time, but the idea remains the same, that we need to enhance our intelligence, be that in defense, of course, is very important, but really everywhere, and use what humans have the questions, right? Humans have the questions they need to get to the solutions, and Palantir is the bridge between 
the question and the solution. Let's continue. This top-down view is insufficient for forward deployed units to separate the enemy from the population. For this reason, Palantir also enables information flow and knowledge management from the bottom up. Let's explore how a new unit deploying to Kabul could quickly get up to speed on local dynamics, not only in terms of insurgent activity, but also civilian infrastructure. This geo-search will return all government organizations within the area, which could, for example, enable a civil affairs team to find contact information for a local sewage department in order to assist a provincial reconstruction project. Opening this organization in the browser, we find a dossier of its relevant information, including a phone number. Suppose that a company commander is interested in intelligence reports pertaining to his unit's area of responsibility. Let's perform another geo-search on this neighborhood, specifying documents as our target. This search returns all reports from the given AOR, which are sorted by date in the timeline. Palantir Forward, a disconnected version of Palantir, enables units downrange to input data and push it up to a central repository whenever connectivity is available, even at low bandwidth. For example, a Palantir Forward user might geotag this building as a community meeting place, or record information on local concerns and influence networks derived from key leader engagement. Once published, this knowledge is available to intelligence analysts at all levels, as well as new units rotating into the area. Because commanders may want to monitor particular persons or issues, Palantir users can create custom feeds that will alert them whenever relevant information enters the database. For instance, these object watch feeds provide an alert whenever information about specific high-value individuals is added or changed, but this document search feed provides alerts for any news reports concerning raids. This filter search feed tracks various socioeconomic and infrastructure metrics in towns of concern. For example, the Bayawa town's partially employed status is listed as red. We can click on this property to view metadata showing which Palantir user entered the status as red, in this case, Lieutenant Hollenbach. We also find a link to the source document Lieutenant Hollenbach used to structure this information. So of course there's so much you can comment on there, but this is really a highly specialized solution, of course, a highly specialized demo on going for something specific. And so my commentary around that point being that Palantir, just the way they set up Gotham, it's we're going to enable you through all of these tools, through all of these means, like go ahead and search for something that you need. You can check in this place to see if we have the data there. You can copy it. You can move it over here. It's, it's all about enabling intelligence, but also enabling solutions. So can you take something from here and move it over there, as I just said, but what can we enable you to do as the person looking for the solution? Because when you just have a data set, a very basic example, in Excel or something like that, just a .csv, there aren't any insights there. And there aren't any insights, you can't visualize it, but you also can't see what else can I do with this. It's up to your imagination, but Palantir Gotham actually puts that imagination on an application. And so you can poke and prod and see what, what are the connections here, what comes next, which actually lifts the weight and the cognitive load from how do I make this work to what should I be thinking about? How can I navigate to a solution? Not how do I move some Excel file or data do I need to pull in next? Something like that. Next, let's examine how Palantir can integrate data from non-traditional sources to increase the warfighter's understanding of local economies as well as other issues relevant to defeating the Afghan insurgency. Starting from the Ministry of Rural Reconstruction, we can search for all villages and provinces that receive money from this ministry. Next, we'll drag the results to the map to see where these villages are located. Using map layers, we can then overlay areas of opium poppy production. According to this dataset, few villages in this province receive funding, which might be a reason for its high poppy production. Okay, here's the closing, and listen to what this guy's saying about Palantir. Again, reminding yourself this was 11 years ago and some months now. 
and this is what they were thinking about for their product and platform. Palantir has created a platform to empower the warfighter and analyst in fulfilling the counterinsurgency mission. From integrating intelligence into one common operating picture, to disseminating knowledge that is too often lost in the operational shuffle, to enabling true theater-wide collaboration. So I think this was super helpful to see and understand what Palantir was up to back in 2010 and what their core product was about, remember, founded in 2003, around there. And they've been working on this product, Gotham, ever since then. This was their original product. They have worked on developing these sort of data solutions for enterprises now, which Foundry is eating up more and more of their revenue share that they have in, in a percentage terms. But this is their core product. These are the solutions that they've actually been working towards. And it's really awesome to see um, the progress they've made. You can check out other videos that I put out, Supercuts. You can also look on Palantir's official channel uh, for the Gotham side of where they stand today. But pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to share where they were in 2010 and really how important it is what they are doing. So hopefully this was helpful. Until next time.